So a few weeks back when I had posted my top five weapons video here for Modern Warfare 3, I had asked if you guys were interested in possibly seeing a top five aftermarket parts video. That's exactly what we got for you guys today. This list took me a while to absolutely perfect, but I'm sure you guys are going to love absolutely every one of them. So if you guys think I missed a particular conversion kit or aftermarket part, Make sure you guys go down in the comment section and let me know. But in my personal opinion, I'm giving you guys some fire setups here. So I'm sure many of you have already viewed one of my top five weapon lists in Modern Warfare 3 before. So you guys know that I always like to throw in a couple honorable mentions, maybe a buff or maybe a nerf to one of the ones I'm about to show you would push this particular one into the top five. And in this case, I have the Holger 26 rapid fire kit or the Jack burnout kit. This thing, in my opinion, is extremely fun. Now, is it viable in complete LMG form? Not exactly, because it's not a very good long range weapon. At the same time, I just have a ton of fun every time I use it. This extremely fast fire, putting it a thousand rounds per minute, just makes it worth it, in my opinion. Extremely good at close and medium range. So let's cover the statistics here for the Jack Burnout Kit. It makes sense. It's gonna get an increase to fire rate, along with damage, fall off, bullet velocity, and limb damage. The one thing I will say is that when you hold the trigger for too long, the recoil is a bit sporadic, and that's exactly what they're talking about with the sustained recoil control. Other than that, though, I will say it's extremely easy to use. So if you're mindful of how you're using the weapon, you're not holding down the trigger all too long, you should find nothing but success. You guys can see all the statistics here on the screen. The most important one, obviously, is at 42% of the fire rate, making it 1,000 rounds per minute. For the optic here, I am using the Jack Glassless Optic. That's gonna give you fire aiming stability, AKA visual recoil control. You're gonna see this on a lot of the weapons that I'm about to show you. I use this on a lot of setups just in general and then on the main channel. Whether they're using an aftermarket port a lot, I just really like this optic. For a stock, you're going to throw on the Ascent Lord stock. That's going to give you aiming idle sway, recoil control, gun kick control, and fire aiming stability. I will say, one of, like I stated, one of the downsides is the overall recoil control, and this attachment's gonna do a very good job of helping you that with that at 17% to the gun kick, 7% to the horizontal and vertical recoil control here. For our rear grip, we're going with the Morn 20 grip. That's gonna give you flinch resistance, aiming idle sway, gun kick control, and recoil control. The big two is gonna be the gun kick and recoil control but the flinch resistance is nice you're virtually not going to move when getting shot at so take with that what you will it's going to be 14 percent to the gun kick 10 percent to the horizontal and vertical recoil control and then a massive 47 percent to the flinch resistance in our final attachment is the bruin heavy support grip because it's going to give you even more gun kick control along with horizontal recoil control and fire aiming stability i'm really using this simply because of that fire aiming stability it's a kind of important, but at the same time, this weapon, when it does become a little sporadic, it's more of that horizontal that becomes uncontrollable. So this is going to also help that cause. So like I said, maybe with just a buff to this one or a nerf to one of the other weapons I'm about to show you, this thing could fall in my top five aftermarket parts. But for now, it does fall in an honorable mention, a really fun one at the end of the day, no matter where I end up putting it. So in my second honorable mention slot, I'm going to have the DM56. And this is where it's important. You make sure you need to select the DM56 and then choose the Jack Signal Burst. The Jack Signal Burst is available on the Holger 556 and the DM56. So the difference here is the recoil pattern is much less on the DM56. That's extremely important because when you have a burst weapon, you need to make sure it is easy to hit your shots to hit one burst kills. And let me tell you, this thing does hit one burst after one burst kill. Now it's not in the top five simply because the mobility on it isn't great. One small buff to the mobility, maybe making the ADS faster, even maybe the sprint to fire. It could definitely be one of, in my opinion, a meta weapon in this game, not just a top five aftermarket part, a possible meta. So the Jack signal burst is rather self-explanatory. It just turns whatever weapon you're using into a burst weapon. So when we look at some statistic here, it is going to technically lower the damage, but you're gonna be getting a four round burst weapon in return you kind of need to lower it. it still is a one burst you guys saw it in the firing range very reliable and the recoil is much better on this thing on top of that it quote unquote increases the fire rate i guess 37 percent there but it is a very reliable one shot kill with manageable recoil control the jack glasses optic is what we're going to be using here once again fire aiming stability i already talked about it with the last one it's just my preferred optic of choice at the end of the day. You guys can choose a different one if you want. For a stock, I have the Holger recoil pad for gun kick and recoil control. It, this is just to help the cause, especially at long ranges. When it comes to close and medium range fights, the recoil is rather manageable, but when it comes to super long range fights, it does become a little more difficult to hit those shots. This attachment is going to help you significantly. 9% to the gun kick along with 14% to the horizontal and vertical recoil control. Now, 
we have a preference here. I'm running the 40 round mag. As always, you guys can choose the 30, even the 20 if you wanted. It is just gonna be your preference. If you wanna take this off and maybe go with a different attachment altogether, you can feel free to do so. In my final attachment here is the Zem Compensated Flash Hider to gain some extra recoil control and fire aiming stability. This just kind of tops off the entire build. It's gonna give you everything that's left and necessary to cover. It's gonna give you 5% to the horizontal recoil control, 15% to the vertical recoil control, and then even more added on there to the fire aiming stability. So I don't know when exactly this thing got buffed. I don't think it was ever officially buffed, but somebody had told me to use it one day and they were absolutely right. I tried it when the jack signal burst first came out and you guys know it was, was not exactly great, but you guys can visually see this thing's a one burst monster. I don't know if it's a bug that it's this good or if maybe, I don't know. I really can't give you an honest answer because it wasn't this good before. And now all of a sudden it feels like the M8A1 from Black Ops 2. So at number five, we're running the Jack Scimitar kit for the FJX Horus, which is going to significantly reduce the recoil control of the weapon. Along with that, it's going to up the damage range. Think of this thing like a fast paced assault rifle. So at the end of the day, you are going to be sacrificing mobility. It's not going to be as up close and personal as the FGX Horus without the conversion kit, but it's still a very fun option and an extremely accurate one. So looking at our statistics here for the Jack Scimitar kit, you guys can see aiming at a sway, recoil control, bullet velocity and damage ranging, fire aiming stability, basically everything I just said in the intro there. It's an extremely accurate option. It's going to get a 49% increase to the damage range, bringing it up to over 20 meters. AR statistics there. Bullet velocity is increased by 35% up to 648 meters per second. And then our recoil gets massive buffs across the board. 25% to the gun kick, 41% to the horizontal and 28% to the re vertical recoil control. So it is no joke, but you are sacrificing a lot of mobility with this one. Once again, the Jack Glasses Optic is making an appearance. I do actually kind of like the iron sights on this one, but it does make it easier to hit longer range shots with the Jack Glasses Optic. As always, you guys can run whatever you want here though. For the stock, I am going with the Modus 30 stock. That's gonna increase some mobility that we did lose by running the kit. It's gonna give you ADS, sprint speed, and movement speed. So I'll hide my camera so you guys can see exactly what we are gaining here. Honestly, I chose it primarily for the ADS at 8%, but you are getting 4% there to the movement and sprint speed. Over here to an under barrel, I'm going with the DR6 hand stop. Same reason we chose the stock. We want to increase the mobility and handling of the weapon. ADS, aim walking speed, sprint to fire speed, and movement speed. This is going to give you larger values than the stock though. So again, Gonna hide my camera so you guys can see. 4% to the movement, 5% to the crouch movement, 3% to the ADS movement, 10% to the aim down sight speed, and 5% to the sprint to fire. We're starting to get back on track with a fast paced SMG here, but still not as fast as the original FJX Horus. In our final attachment is the Trebuche Break. That's gonna give you gun kick control and recoil control and a lot at that. So with this particular attachment, it's gonna make it a long range monster. Looking at these statistics, this is exactly why. 25% to the gun kick, and along with 15% to the horizontal and vertical recoil control. I've actually used this thing and shot like a 50 meter long shot because of this attachment with that Jack Scimitar kit. It basically doesn't move. It reminds me uh, basically of the Jack BFB muzzle without all of those sacrifices. I still have yet to make a video on this thing on the main channel. So if you guys wanted me to do that, make sure you guys go down in the comment section and let me know. I'd be happy to make a full length, you know, gameplay video on the Jack Scimitar kit. It's kind of been on, you know, on my things to do and I just never done it. So if you guys are really wanting to see that, make sure you let me know down in the comment section. So at number four, I have the Jack Patriot kit for the M16. At first, I really did think this was like a 100% meta kind of gig. I thought everybody was gonna be running it, but after really dumbing it down, I've kind of figured it out. It's more of a nostalgia thing. You get those classic iron sights, a really steady recoil pattern. It reminds you a lot of the M4. It's still good, that's no joke. It's a very viable option, but it definitely doesn't top some of the top tier metas here in the game. That being said, it definitely falls right in the middle. You got virtually no recoil. And again, it's just a nostalgia thing. And tell me this thing's not the M4. So the Jack Patriot obviously takes the M16 and turns it into a full auto weapon with enhanced recoil and damage range. It is going to decrease the overall damage because that just makes sense to be honest. When you take a first weapon, you do need to decrease the damage. Otherwise, it'd be extremely overpowered. Could you imagine an M4 with like 54 base damage? That'd be absolutely nuts. So they did decrease the damage to balance it out. We are also getting an 8% increase to that damage range, 60% to the gun kick, and 45% to the horizontal and vertical recoil control. The damage range is cool and all. 
But that recoil control is the reason this thing is so good and a reason a lot of people do love it. For our first attachment, we have the Seiken ZX grip for a rear grip to increase recoil and gun kick. You do need attachments like this one without the correct attachments. This thing does like to shoot to the sky. So this is going to give you 7% to gun kick, horizontal and vertical recoil control. This is just a preference, but I am running the 45 round mag with the additional TTK over in Modern Warfare 3 at 150. I do like to have those extra bullets just in case I need them. It is a preference. You can go with the normal 30 if you want to. I suppose you could even go with the 60. It is going to come down to play style and preferences. For my under barrel, the Bruin Heavy Support Grip is coming back into play for gun kick, aiming out of sway, horizontal recoil control, along with fire aiming stability. This one gives you fire aiming stability, which is awesome. Of course, that's what I'm targeting, but the horizontal recoil is quite bad on this thing. And horizontal recoil is extremely hard to control if you don't have the correct attachments. So that's the main reason I did choose this one. We're going to get 10% there to that gun kick. 8% to the horizontal recoil control, and then of course, fire aiming stability. And my final attachment is the Zem Compensated Flash Hider to kind of round out the build, give us more recoil control along with fire aiming stability. It's gonna give you 5% to the horizontal, 15% to the vertical. And of course, like I said, even more fire aiming stability. This weapon more or less does not shake as you guys saw in the firing range. Before the addition of some of these other kits into the game, this may have fallen higher on the list, but there's a couple on here that you guys aren't going to be surprised that they're higher. It does, at the end of the day, they're all good options. All of them are very good, and all of them compete very well here in Modern Warfare 3. At number three, I have the Jack Annihilator Bullpup Kit for the Pulling Yacht 762. In the beginning of this game, this conversion kit got a lot of attention because it was one of the, you know, originals that came out in the game. However, over time, it's kind of gotten more and more overlooked. It did receive some nerfs, but... I think this thing's no joke. I think it 100% makes the Pulmia a more viable option every day of the week. Not only are you gaining mobility and making it a faster paced weapon, but you're also getting a fire rate increase. It just, everything that I would want from a weapon kind of gets put into this kit. I understand it may not be some of your favorite, but I, shoot, it's deserving a number three for sure. So the Jack Annihilator Bullpup Kit, as you can see, mobility and handling, rate of fire, hip fire and tack stance along with ADS speed. So it's just, at the end of the day, increasing the mobility and ADS, recoil control, rate of fire at the sacrifice of damage range. But we are still keeping our base damage. So you can still get a three shot kill with a headshot. You can get, you know, the 49 base damage of the upper torso. It's a high damage monster with a much improved fire rate of 16%, better recoil control and better aimed out sight speed. Now tell me why this shouldn't fall within the top five. This thing's an absolute monster. So my first attachment is the Jack Glasses Optic once again. I've seen some people use different reflexes. I've also seen people use like the Corio Eagle's Eye 2.5X. At the end of the day, it is a, a preference attachment. I've used both, I'll show you. I've used the Corio Eagle's Eye. I've also used the Iron sights, you guys can really use whatever you're comfortable with. I would try a bunch of things out and see where you fall. For a stock here, I do have the Command, uh, Command D15 recoil reduction pad for gun kick, fire aiming, stability, and recoil control. This is to just further help you with farther range fights here. It's gonna give you 21% to the gun kick, 5% to the horizontal and vertical recoil control. For a muzzle, you are going to want the Zem Compensated Flash Hider, once again, to give you fire aiming stability along with vertical and horizontal recoil control. This isn't too crazy for this weapon. Like there's plenty of options you can use. I know some people like to use just the normal shadow strike suppressor or a different muzzle. It is gonna come down to preference. The Zem is my preference here at 5% to the horizontal recoil control, 15% to the vertical recoil control along with fire aiming stability. And the final attachment is the Jack Annihilator long barrel to increase the bullet velocity and damage range because one of the negatives of running the bullpup kit is damage range loss, and this is gonna bring it back up 34%. So we're not as good as we were before the kit, but 34 meters, or I'm sorry, 30 meters is still extremely good, especially with the high damage. Things like this always get kind of brushed under the rug because, you know, they get older, people get bored with them, but if you haven't used this thing in a long time or you're just trying to use it for the first time, it is no joke. Go on to Rust or go on to a map that has long range fights, a map that's gonna play a little slower and use this thing, you're going to absolutely dominate. I don't think I've ever heard people rage more than getting killed by this thing, at least in when I'm playing. I feel like I always get ragers when I'm using the Pull Me Out 7.62 kit. At number two, we have the Jack Requiem conversion kit for the Cast Off 7.62 and Cast Off 5.45. I very recently covered this one on the channel and I've talked about it already. 
it's got virtually zero recoil whatsoever and for a lot of you that actually may be a problem because you've been so used to controlling recoil that you end up shooting downwards as you're aiming at enemies it's extremely hard to actually hit headshots or be accurate towards the upper torso when you have a weapon that doesn't need recoil to be controlled that being said because of how easy this thing is with a good damage pretty decent damage range it's definitely deserving of the number two spot i don't know if anybody's gonna argue with that so let's take a look here at the jack requiem kit vertical recoil control gun kit control horizontal recoil control self-explanatory it's not really changing much other than a small bit to the fire rate at four percent there but that's 50 percent to the gun kick 86 percent to the horizontal recoil control and 100 percent to the vertical recoil control you can see it's zeros across the board there for the vertical so that's exactly what i was talking about when it's kind of a little difficult to use a weapon where you don't control recoil so personally i'm not a fan of these iron sights i know a lot of people are i've seen some people running them but personally not for me a little too blocky it blocks my vision a little too much so i'm going once again back to the jack glasses optic Feel free to run whatever you want though. For an ammunition type, I'm going with the high grain rounds here to increase both bullet velocity along with damage range. We can't run a barrel on the thing, so this is the only way we can do this. It's gonna give you 15% to the damage range along with 15% to the bullet velocity. As you can see, we're not sacrificing anything to the vertical recoil control. We are a little bit to the horizontal and gun kick, but at the end of the day, that's still nothing. Like there's nothing, no recoil to be controlled here. For the underbarrel, I'm gonna be speeding it up with this one with the DR6 hand stop to increase aim down sight speed, aim walking speed, sprint to fire speed and movement speed. It's not gonna be anything crazy, but it is going to help you with a little more aggression, bringing your ADS up 7%, your sprint to fire speed up 8%, and then some smaller values there towards mobility as well. In our final attachment is the Scratch 20L suppressor to help you with some visual shake on the weapon. This is all you really need when it comes to visual recoil control is a Scratch 20L suppressor. You're gonna be stealthy on the, on the map. You're not gonna show up on the mini map. And at the same time, there's not gonna be any shake on your weapon the return 1% to the ADS is the only sacrifice you got here. A lot of people just watched my video on this one and I got a ton of positive feedback. So if you guys haven't had a chance to try this out, you guys are going to give me positive feedback as well. I haven't heard anybody complain about this one and it's an absolute monster on the map. And at number one, I have the Jack Revenger kit for the BP-50, which turns it into an SMG slash assault rifle hybrid in I think this one falls at number one simply because of my personal play style, how aggressive I am on the map, having the ability to take medium range fights while also running up with SMG, ADS, and sprint to fire speed just suits me really well. Obviously, some people may disagree with this take, but I do think it is the best conversion kit here in Modern Warfare 3 without a doubt. Between the very good recoil pattern, we got an extremely good fire rate by default with the BP-50. I don't know what else I could ask for. This is the perfect weapon built for me. So the Jack Revenger kit, it's gonna reduce your horizontal recoil control, ball velocity and damage range, nothing crazy there. You get a lot more positives than negatives with this one. We're gonna get magazine ammo capacity, giving it a 60 round drum, vertical recoil control, aim down sight speed and an increase to fire rate. So the fast fire rate that the BP-50 already had got increased even further here. You're gonna get a 15% additional to the fire rate. Obviously that 30% increase to vertical recoil control and most importantly is gonna be all of this mobility that you guys are seeing on the screen now. The big two being ADS at 22% and sprint to fire speed at 20%. The other values are no slouch either though. They're extremely important. You get to run around like it's an SMG. For our first actual attachment here outside of the kit is gonna be the quick fire laser. This is gonna give me aim down sight speed at the sacrifice of nothing. At the end of the day, another preference style of attachment. If you guys wanna go with the Kimura here where you're gonna be getting ADS, tax stance, whatever. Personally, I don't like the ones that are visible in ADS or visible in the hip because it makes enemies find you much easier. Let's just say you need to reload really quickly and your laser's sticking out. They're gonna find you pretty quickly. So just my personal preference at the end of the day, it's gonna give me 5% to the ADS as zero cons to running this attachment. Over here to a rear grip, I have the TRST IV grip tape just to help me with a little bit of recoil control because this is still got AR statistics on it. So gonna need to make it a little easier to hit my shots. 10% there to the gun kick, 7% to the horizontal and vertical recoil control. For an ammunition type, we do have the high grain rounds. Obviously one of the cons of running this kit is the damage range and bullet velocity get hit pretty heavily, but this is going to increase it 15% and it's perfect for medium range fights. It's not like you're gonna be running around with this one and chasing 60 meter long shots. 
you're going to be sticking in close range engagements along with medium range fights and this is going to do a very good job at increasing that damage range in my final attachment here is the zem 35 compensated flash hider for vertical and horizontal recoil control along with fire aiming stability a much needed attachment at the end of the day to once again target those medium range fights it's going to give you five percent to the horizontal 15 percent to the vertical and of course even more fire aiming stability which is 100 percent necessary here on this particular conversion kit so for the final time in this video here's all of your attachments on the screen if you guys wanted to pause to copy them down an absolute banger i'm sure a lot of you have already used this kit and i'm sure a lot of you have seen some of my gameplays with this thing i always have a blast it really does just suit me perfectly a weapon built just for me i'm convinced Thank you, Sledgehammer. So that is my top five aftermarket parts here in Modern Warfare 3. So again, I want you guys to go down in the comment section and let me know if I've missed any conversion kit that you guys think is better. I'll be happy to, you know, give it a look, give it a try and game, maybe get back to you and see how I'm feeling with it. At the end of the day, a lot of these are preference. You know what I mean? Like some of the slower paced ones I'm not a fan of, and you may not be a fan of my number one choice with the Jack Revenger kit. But aftermarket parts have been an absolutely lovely addition to Modern Warfare 3, and I hope we see them in the future of Call of Duty. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys hit the like and subscribe button for me if you have not already. I'll see you guys in the next one.